One God and same as yourselves, the same God, but we believe he in, but we believe Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger. Right, okay. And then the second pillar is the prayer. So we pray for the, the Holy Ghost came into picture. Holy Spirit, yeah? Mm. So this Trinity actually is the cause. You know that sound. Hi, everything good? Yes. Yeah, thank how you. are you finding the exhibition so far? It's very interesting. Okay, yes, okay. yes. Have I you have a copy of the Quran yeah. as we ought to. And uh, what's drawing you to this? And it'll be identical. Identical. Yeah. And it's been like. So I found out about the event from um, my um, boss at Cumbria Youth Alliance. Um, I work with a young Syrian who speaks Arabic. So okay. I was quite interested to come and discover a little bit more about Islam because it's very important to him. Um, I was extremely welcomed as I've arrived at the event. My child has been made very welcome. I've spoken to some extremely interesting people because um, there's a, a lot of negativity about Islam in the in the press often, um, and it's very much shows in this exhibition that it's all about, about peace, which is very nice to hear. <laughs> I have learned to write my name and the gentleman who um, wrote my name for me, has. Um, he, I found it very interesting, he said that it is, the Quran was, um, was it discovered or um, brought into regular use something like 1400 years ago? Yeah, it was revealed and he was, 1400 years ago. That was it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he was telling me about the um, the accent of the Arabic that was used, is still used in Mecca. Um, and um, he was saying that this it, it doesn't contradict science. Um, so he was explaining he's a dentist and he, in theory, could use the science from the Quran. is still relevant now, which I found fascinating. I would okay. quite like to go and discover more about that. Yeah. The other thing that I found extremely interesting is I work with a lot of young people with mental health problems. Okay. And um, the gentleman who was um, writing my name for me was explaining that I thought it was lovely that this, this 17, he was 17 when I started working with him, he's now 18. And okay. Islam is just part of his life. Um, which in the UK it's almost embarrassing to have a religion for a lot of the young people I work with. They, they don't have a religion, they avoid religion, whereas um, you know for this young man it's so important in his life um, and I just I think that's lovely um, and the gentleman I was talking to said you know the it's just a, a way of life, it's, it's part of growing up one of the things that you have there to help you become more resilient, which is, you know, a really important thing. And, true, true. you know, I don't, I don't mean that necessarily Islam is missing from everybody's lives, but there is something missing. Um, so it's, it's very nice that he was saying that in, in your um, Islamic community, suicide and mental health problems aren't as, um, aren't as large a problem as they are um, true, true. Yeah. in general, as, as they are. To yeah, this the is. Press. Yeah, so no, I agree with. I agree with that. But I would echo the same sentiments. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's because obviously so of it's our doing something right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And anyway, I think we don't want to take too much more of your time, yeah, and no. uh, I'll just finish off by giving you a copy of the Quran. Thank you very much. This is uh, an English translation. Yep. Hopefully you can read it. I hope When so you too. read it, just bear in mind it's a uh, religious text. Yep. So it's not like a storybook, a novel. Yep. So when you read it, read it with that in thought in mind. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, Fantastic. And read it in that mode as well. Yes. That it's a religious text. Um, but you thank you for putting on an exhibition like this in this area. I think no problem. Thank you. Very often much. you're given a, a bad name in the press. Um, this religion and yeah, it's unfair. No, that's the main. <laughs> that's the main purpose of yeah. these type of exhibitions to yeah. explain to everyone, inform you know the true teachings yeah. and yeah. the peaceful teachings. What Islam really is. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, and it was a pleasure much. meeting thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye. No problem. Uh, what did you think of the events today in Whitehead? Basically, that's the question. Okay then, right? Absolutely fabulous that you've came into the community and told us a bit about your lifestyle and your religion. Um, it's very generous to give all the reader materials and um, to even offer refreshments. I think it's 
it's it's great. Hopefully, I'll learn a bit from the things I read. Very happy to have taken ten minutes out of my day and came and spoke to everyone. Everyone's been really helpful and friendly. Have you attended an in? Uh, have you attended an event of this like before? Never. Oh, okay. Never. Interesting. Never. So would you say it would be a, a good thing to maybe try and do these kinds of events? So yeah. Like, you can just, you know, yeah. Dispel, yeah, definitely. You know, misconceptions definitely. that people have really. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله as well as soon as I came in there was somebody there um, to welcome me in and to talk to me um, but yeah it's really interesting there's an awful lot of information here and I've, I've not got round all of it yet um, but I've spent uh, quite a lot of time just talking to people and, and asking questions um, so um, it's definitely a, a positive thing I've ended up knowing much more than when I came in. Thank you and if you were to have any highlights or one thing that you could highlight from the event that kind of stood out for you what would that be? Um, I think it would just be um, talking to people I, some of the conversations have been um, very much about information and just th things I didn't know like wh when did how does your calendar work and when did the prophet die and th things like that um, but there have also been a couple of more challenging ones about um, how how Islam treats um, certain aspects of, 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 of life and different people and um, where my views have perhaps differed um, but we've had a really good conversation about it and I you know that that person understood more about where I'm coming from and I understand um, more about their position on it as well so um, it's good to have have some challenging conversations as well as just finding out more information and would you like to have such events regularly in this area or other areas, do you think it's something that's beneficial for communities? I think any kind of event like this where you just open up an aspect of community, of a community, to, to other people and say, come in and find out more, um, because, because um, the Muslim community around here is, is quite small and, and quite dissipated across Cumbria, then we don't, we don't get together very often or very much, our paths don't cross that much, so um, it can only be a good thing, I think, if uh, we can just get together. Okay, Definitely. thank you. Thank you very much, You're Leila, welcome. for your time, and it was an honor having you once again. Thank Hope you. we can meet again in other future events like this. Thank yes. you very much. Okay, thank take you. care. Take care. Thank you very much. So my name is Mohammed. I'm a board member, um, company secretary of Awaz Cumbria. Okay. So we work across Cumbria. 
to improve community relations and support black and minority ethnic communities and also the minority faiths like Muslim communities across the area mm -hmm. in terms of their access to services, resources and integration and cohesion across the, the county. Um, and I'm also, <clears throat> in a personal capacity, a member of SACRE as well for Cumbria. So I sit on the SACRE as a Muslim representative. So again, to make sure that Muslim views are represented within the SACRE world, in the education world, um, across the county. Okay, that's super. Um, for, for the benefit of some of the, maybe the viewers that may see this on, on YouTube when I upload it, inshallah, soon, um, would, you, could you be, uh, would you be able to just give us a, a little idea of what SACRE actually stands yeah. for? So SACRE is a, a statutory body on religious education. Okay. So each local authority will have a SACRE, and that's made up of councillors of all the different faiths across the across the county, so you'll have Christians, Jews, Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, depending on the make of the faith, and they sort of look at the religious education syllabus across the, across the education system, primary and secondary. I know in Cumbria we organize a SACRE conference every year where all the RE teachers come together to look at and get new tools the next and skills that they can use um, to, again, what they can go in schools. We sort of try and push things like Sabrina Memorial Day, Holocaust Memorial Day, etc. We, I try to do visits to schools or visits to mosques for schools. So we try to sort of get, from my perspective, Islam onto that curriculum and onto the school's agenda in a, in a positive way. Super, mashallah, that's a very good... Um very good way of uh, getting uh, prominence and, and yeah. recognition, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. for, for Islam. So we're, we're here today, uh, we're on Saturday the 9th of November, we're in Whitehaven. This is the first time that we've ever done this uh, Discover Islam exhibition. Uh, so what are your thoughts about this exhibition and how it's been made out? I think it's really important in terms of just raising awareness of Islam in the community. Yeah. Because Cumbria and Whitehaven, or if you look at Cumbria as a whole, it's a very large county, predominantly white, very small minority communities. So actually having an exhibition that talks about what Islam is, it's starting process of an education process is sort of, I'm doing work at schools, but it's the wider community. How do we get the wider community to understand who Muslims are, what Muslims are, what they believe in, etc. And, and what this does is raise that awareness and understanding to hopefully work towards and support some of the work we're doing and others are doing to create a more cohesive um, community across Cumbria and in Whitehaven as well. Alhamdulillah. Have you ever had anything um, of a similar nature here in Whitehaven or in Cumbria for that matter? We've, we've had small exhibitions. Right. So, so for example, we've, I, I remember about seven, eight years ago um, on Islamic Awareness when we had a, had a, a small exhibition that we put up and invited people in on an open day. Yeah. We've done lots of um, visits for professionals um, and again open dates for communities. Mm -hmm. And for the last three or four years, the mosques, particularly in Carlisle and other areas, have been doing things that brings people in or going out and giving gifts. Um, last three or four years, we've done iftars, open iftars to bring the community in. So again, that's brought community in. The imams come, talked about Islam, we've shared an iftar together, a meal together. So again, it's, it's those little things that we've had in the last couple of years, we've had these celebrations, again, bringing people in. And again, one of the things in the last two years, three years, has been we've had Syrian refugees come. So again, we've tried to bring communities together to try and integrate them and feel, make them feel part of the community, but also the community understand where these people have come from, the refugees have come from in terms of what happened to them in Syria. So we're always doing little things that allows people to understand not only what different communities are, but what's actually going on in the community, what sort of festivals are going on, so whether it's either Ladha, either Fidr, yeah. Ramadan. So just sort of, just continue raising the awareness. Alhamdulillah. I think that's a very good way of uh, slowly, slowly letting uh, the indigenous population know about Islam and what Islam stands for. Finally, um, do you think, and it's the final question that we can end, um, do you think events like these 
uh, will be beneficial. Obviously, I know they will be beneficial. But what are your thoughts? What do you think that we should do these kinds of events more often, and maybe in other different rural areas as well? Do you think that will help? I think yes, because I've worked in rural areas for many, many years. Yeah. So when when I started work, I used to work in Devon, Cornwall, Somerset, which is a very rural area. And again, we've got very small communities. Yeah. I remember when I first moved to Exeter, so there was a mosque there, a very small community. But if you went out in other parts of Devon, it was very, very, very sort of monocultural. Um, and it's about how you raise and raise understanding and awareness. And I think these sort of things help. And also for us, it's, it's about sort of how do you introduce them to the local mosque? Because they see mosques on TV, they'll they go to London or Preston or Blackburn and they'll see a nice fancy yeah, mosque with yeah. dome and minaret. Um, but they, so they go there, but then in Cumbria, you don't see that. Um, in Penrith, it's a small sort of, sort of five by five box which accommodates 30 people. So I think it's, it's, it's a mixture of both. It's about showing them this, but also actually taking them to mosques because I have sort of encouraged them to understand the local Muslim community. I said, it's fine going to Preston, please go to Preston, but also understand the local community and how they actually live in the local area because the local community is, is where you will see them, their kids will be in your school, you will go to their restaurant or takeaway for your food. So I actually understand how the local community is there, so integrate with that. So it's, it's, I think it's very important to do both, bring something in, but also get them to the local so we've sort of done sometimes taken to a local restaurant, so at least the restaurant owners can talk to them, yeah. or taken the restaurant owners out and brought them out into the, some of the visits or schools, so they can understand what their lifestyle is like, yeah. because it's about sort of the local community rather than going outside, and particularly in rural areas, it's really important yeah. because normally racism, xenophobia tends to be high as well. Mm. And it starts breaking down some of those barriers, getting people to talk and having the dialogue, and this yes. is what's happening. You look around. People are talking with each other. Yeah, yeah. And it's how do we get people to talk? How do we then get local people to talk? Yeah. Because locally they'll say, well, actually, I know the experiences I have as a Muslim in Cumbria. So it's about that sort of understanding and sharing that experiences so people understand. And it's a human face to Muslims that we can give to people. Super. I think that uh, encapsulates everything that you know we're trying to do. And Alhamdulillah, you said it very eloquently, and uh, I appreciate that. No, thank that you very much. No, thank Shandla you very much for coming. Hi, Ellie. Hi um, <laughs> my name's Mohammed, um, and we're here in Whitehaven. <laughs> Um, Saturday, the 9th, obviously, um, and we just wanted to sort of come and do a display about the Islamic exhibition and uh, just to make people aware about Islam and just the basic uh, tenets of Islam and what Islam stands for. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, because I saw you coming in this morning, yeah. and I think, what time did you actually come in? Um, I come in about quarter past eleven. Quarter past eleven, yeah. and, and what time is it now, Ooh, roughly? Is it about twenty past two. Wow, so you stayed <laughs> yes. quite a long time. Yes, I had a really good time. Right, so can I begin firstly with um, asking you, what did you think of uh, the event? That, um, I thought it was lovely, I saw families, I saw culture, um, I saw all the different things going on. I got invited to go and read the Quran. I'd never done that before in my life. Beautiful experience. Okay. Got to listen to prayers. That was lovely. And I got to learn about all the cultures and how people live their life and how people dress and why they dress that way. Just yeah. things from a small town. I've never learned about things like this before. And with people coming to do stuff like this, I just yeah. think it's amazing because it's... Being here a couple of hours, I've learned so much, and I don't think I could have learned this without being influenced by people who come and share this experience with people. Yeah, yeah. Just to uh, find out, you know, um, how did you actually find out about this event? Oh, there was a nice man on the street with uh, little cards. Card, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So me and my um, boyfriend were walking down the street, and he had to go to work. He'd like to come with me, but sadly he had to pop off. So uh, I decided to come on my own, and I've had a really good time. I've had a chat with the girls. Some of the girls are my age or around my age, and we've had a good talk about age, culture, where we live, where where we're from. So I've had a really good time. Very good. Um, you know, um, just you live in Whitehead. I do. Yeah. Right. Is there a, a, a 
the Muslim community here and have you ever sort of interacted with them or I've, have I've you known ever met a, them? There's a couple of Muslim families, I wouldn't say there's very many, I know of two and mm, no, there's, there's not very many at all, so right, this is like a good experience to be able to talk to people, learn about the religion and yeah. like I say, why they do and dress in the ways that they do. People look at people dressed up and there's some individuals that find it intimidating, whereas I'm quite curious, I like to ask questions, yeah. so I like to find out why they did this and why this was spiritual to them, dressing in the way that they do and yeah. why... The, the prayer the way that they do praying is it five times a day That's I, I yeah, had yeah. never That's known that before that is uh, I learnt how to fit it into your daily life especially if you work how to fit it in oh, it's, it's been absolutely brilliant so you, somebody actually explained to you oh yeah yeah I've, I've been talking to a lot of the ladies yeah. about how in the day to day situations how religion affects their life daily uh, yeah. they get up in the morning, the way that they dress they pray five times a day and that just keeps them, I think it's quite a family orientated religion, everything's yeah. all about being together, togetherness, family I think yeah. I just think it's beautiful that way Yeah um, So do you think um, events like these are well firstly has this event let's say, asking you personally, mm -hmm. has that changed your outlook? Oh, definitely. What Muslims yeah. are like? Yeah. And is that for the better? Oh, definitely for the better. I've never looked at anyone's religion or judged anyone else's religion, but I just like coming here and learning because I'm 22 now and I've learned more in two hours than I have in the 22 years of being alive about yeah, <laughs> the, about the Muslim, Muslim community. And yet, you know that uh, Muslims uh, probably are one in every five people yeah. that you come across in the world are yeah. Muslims. So yeah. It's amazing how a lot of people may be, they may be aware of, uh, let's say as an example, China has one of the biggest populations yeah. or, or India has mm -hmm. the other one of the yeah. biggest populations, 1.4 billion or something yeah. like that. Uh, but we know uh, a, quite a bit about China, we yeah. know quite a bit about India as an example. Yeah. But um, it's, it's amazing that, you know, knowing that, that one in every five people is a Muslim, mm -hmm. and yet, you know, we don't really know that much about Muslims. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I think more people need to be educated because, like I said, it's such a beautiful religion and people show it on the bodies. I think you know if a man or woman is a Muslim just with the way that they dress themselves and I, I just think it's a, a beautiful religion. We need to learn more. Like I say, in Whitehaven, I know of two families and I've lived here all of my life. I, I don't think it's that common. Um, yeah. But it's definitely changed my opinion on... I, I didn't realise that such similarities from yeah. growing up a Catholic to the Muslim religion. There's a lot of similarities which I didn't notice. I knew there were similarities between Judaism and Christianity, Christianity but yeah. I didn't make the link between being a Muslim and being a Christian. And there's actually quite a lot of links that are together which I didn't know before. So, yeah, yeah. you know, obviously, if it's coming from the same mm -hmm. source, yeah. there, there will be similarities, yeah. obviously. Yeah. So, just uh, to sum it up mm -hmm. in the final sort of summary of this event, yeah. what would you say uh, highlighted for you? Or what would you say was the highlight of your day here today? How friendly everyone was. Uh, everyone was open to talking about the religion, why uh, religious cinema ceremonies happen, um, where they happen, and... <coughs> Even little children were coming up to me and talking about the religion, just so proud. I feel like there's places where people feel uncomfortable to be able to be proud of the religion and how they feel about themselves, but there's a room full of people here today who are showing who they are and how they dress and how the family acts, and it's just it's something to be proud of, and I feel like they're showing it off today in a, pr in a very proud positive. manner. Yeah, in a positive, positive manner, way. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, no Ellie. problem. I appreciate that, you know, just taking the time and talking to us. Yeah, no, it's absolutely I do fine. appreciate it. Thanks very much again. Oh, that's Thank great. You. Thank you. Thank you.
Do you have any questions? No, no. That I can expand on, or no, meaning no, in really. answering? No. So basically, I'll go over it very briefly. So we start off with the basics of Islam. Yeah. yeah so what we have to believe in to be a Muslim. Yeah. So it's just five pillars. Yeah. So the first pillar, there is no God but Allah. Yeah. So there's only one God. Yeah. And in Arabic, we call him Allah. Allah. Now it's the same God that the Christians believe in, the same God that the Jews believe in. But in Arabic, it's Allah. And we believe it's only one God. He's got no partner, no son, no daughter. Okay. He's right, unique. Okay. He's just, he's, and he's, he's independent and no one's like him. He doesn't give birth to anyone. He wasn't giving birth to him. He's just been there forever. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger. So we believe in all of them from Adam to Moses to Jesus to Joseph to Jacob yeah. to Job. That was quite enlightening. We have to, to, to read that. I, I thought there was sort of distinct. No, no, no. We have to. Religion. If we don't believe in any, or if we don't believe in one of them, like say for example, we don't believe, then we cannot be a Muslim. We ha part of being a Muslim, you have to believe in every single prophet, and we have to believe that they were the best of creation. They were the best of people yeah. to walk the face of this earth. Of, of Chosen that, servants of, of God. Time, yeah. Of that time. Yeah. And even now as well, um, obviously they're in their graves, but we still believe that they were the greatest and no one can surpass them in greatness right. because they were chosen by God. But we believe Prophet Muhammad was the last messenger. Okay. So this is the fundamental. Once you believe this, then that's it. Then you're a Muslim. That's okay. what. And then that's the first. And then the other three, four pillars, we pray five times a day, that's second, throughout the day. Then we fast for a whole month. Yeah, for, Every year it's known as the month of Ramadan. And that's sort of based on a moon cycle? Or something? Yeah. yeah. And that is obviously the main kind of wisdom behind that is to appreciate the food God gives us, to appreciate that there's people around the world that don't get the same food, don't eat on a daily basis. Yeah. So you need to be thankful to God. And it makes you think about them and remember God. The fourth pillar is charity. We have to give 2.5% of our wealth okay. to the poor and needy every year, uh, once a year. And this is obviously again, because God's blessed you with wealth, then you yeah, should give. And it, it's not everyone, if you like poor or you can't, you not got that much wealth, then you don't have to give. It's only when you've got a certain threshold. And the fifth pillar is Hajj. So you know yeah. this place here, yeah. it's in Mecca. Yes. It's a city in Arabia, mm. Mecca. And basically, can you see that black cube yeah. kind of? What, what is so the so black, it's, what is it's the there, this is, is a, the black cube? So this is the house of God. Okay. Now we don't believe... But it doesn't have any, it's not a, it's not a, a grave or a mausoleum or anything. No, no, so we, we can't, we, we don't worship in Islam, we can't worship idols, we can't worship people, okay. we can't, wor right. we only worship God. Okay. We can't even exaggerate in the praise of the prophets or even Prophet Muhammad to the extent where we start giving him the rank of God. Okay. Right. Now the reason this is the house of God, and it wasn't. It was built by, surprisingly, from Prophet Adam to other prophets, mm -hmm. Abraham, etc. It's been passed down okay. the same spot. Right. Now what did Muhammad. Then Muhammad was here. He was born in Mecca. Okay. This is city. Okay, so he, was he was born, born in Mecca. There. Yeah. And then he went to Medina. Then he went to Medina. There. This is now this mosque. Can you see that green dome? Yeah, that's. That's where he's buried. Now, obviously, there's a mosque uh, within it and around it. Okay. Now, this mm. this is the pilgrimage where once in a lifetime, if you've got enough, you can sit down if you want. No, I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, you, once in a lifetime, if you've got enough money to go and come back, mm. and you know you're stable, etc. Mm -hmm. Then you go a certain time of the year, it's known as the Hajj month. Okay. We, then, we, then you go there and you do pilgrimage. So you go around, you circumambulate, mm -hmm. you go around yeah. and you chant God's name, etc. Et There's different prescribed mm -hmm. uh, things to do. Yeah. And we, then we go to around this city. There's a place, there's different places um, where we have to worship God. Okay. And it's yeah. not too far from here. Now, we don't worship this, like I was saying, this is it. But that's just, that's this is a replica. That's the sort of central point. It's a cent so you know when you, w when you, because we believe we can't see God in this world, okay. even yeah. Christians and everyone yeah. believe. But as a human, when we love someone and we can't see him, then it's hard for us to yeah. 
have that emotional attack. So God has given and us this. You have a central point. So yeah. So, so you feel, so when you pray, the of the yeah. Center of the Muslim world, if you like. So when we pray, when we were praying yeah, here, yeah, we pray right. facing that direction. How are you, Michael? I'm very well, thanks, Mohammed. My name is Mohammed, as yes. you know. Um, we're here, obviously, in Whitehaven, the 9th of November, on a Saturday. Uh, most people will probably be out shopping. But you've decided to come here and have a look. Uh, and we've obviously, we've put up this uh, exhibition right. of Discovery Islam. Mm. And you've been here quite a while. Mm. Uh, and I just wanted your thoughts on what you think about this event. What are your thoughts? Right, thoughts. The first thing I, that struck me was the, the variety of uh, different people here. Uh, from different parts of, mainly from Lancashire, from Bingley, from Preston, from Bradford, um, and then one or two locals. And I, it's, I think it's good that people make the effort really to share belief. I've also been doing a bit of work locally with um, some uh, refugees uh, from Syria, and uh, they are Muslim. And I thought it's an ideal opportunity. You made the effort. It's a marvelous exhibition. Yeah. There's so much information here. Uh, Maybe too much, would you say? I don't or think so. Not too much. Um, it's 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 at the right. You've got such a. You've got electronic. You've got TV. Yeah. You've got books. You've got artifacts. You've got cultural references. Uh, religious references, way of life references, things like this, which is yeah. amazing. And it just shows what's going on in the world. And I, and I like that, the, the variety and diversity of yeah. what's happening in, in, in society, not just in the world. But I, I was saying to uh, Ikran earlier, I cycled uh, from Haworth over Ilkley Mall the other week, and I went, I kept, went through Keithley. And the mosque there, looking down on Keith, it's the yeah the the, the, the golden dome, the, yeah, piru, piru, what did you call it? Minaret. Minaret. That's it. Yeah, uh, it struck me, and that's what that's that's the kind of thing. It's great. It's got diversity, and um, and we've got so many similarities, and it's about about time that this was. Communicating it in this way is a great thing to do, Mohammed. Uh, making the effort to come up for the day and put something like this on. Having it here for a week would be good, and then you yeah. could engage with schools because you know, bringing young people around, young people are open to this kind of thing. S school teachers locally would love an event like this because yeah. you've, you've got so much interactive material. You've got so many staff here. You could have. I, I worked in a college for 25 years. I, we used to go to uh, Liverpool and we'd have a look around. The, the health and social care students. So we'd go to the hospital and such. But one place we did visit was a mosque in Liverpool, okay. and it was great time for question and answer. And these were adults. But to bring, if I could imagine as a teacher bringing a, a class in here, either rel religious education or ethics or history or just cultural geography class yeah. across so many uh, disciplines that they, they, they'd find it fascinating in here because it's okay. such a a, a, a a good exhibition. So would you say it's, uh, well firstly, informative and with various things like you mentioned, do you think, I mean, just asking from your point of view, has, I don't know whether you had any misconceptions about Islam, but do you think whether there were misconceptions or conceptions about good conceptions? There are misconceptions. Yeah. Has there that, some, you think, changed your. What, this exhibition today? Yeah, well, I think, sort of no, I think I knew that. You know, I, I've, got, I've got friends in Bolton right. and, uh, and Manchester, mm -hmm. you know, and St. Anne's Church in Manchester, there was, after the bombings, yeah. there, was, there was a guy put on a little demonstration, well, a little publicity. You know, yeah. I, and he had a hood over his head yeah. and I am a Muslim and he just stood in the square oh yeah it was a, 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 I think I've you seen see a that? video of that right yeah, and then people people were like and, they, and, and, and then the, after yeah. five or ten minutes people started coming and d doing exactly that mm -hmm. and started saying look you know you're a human being yeah 
you know, you're primarily human being. You're not Muslim. You're not Christian. You're not Jewish. You're not. You're a human being. And because underneath all this, we're all very similar, and that's and that's it. And and that that, that issue with with the bombings is is something that isn't common to people like you and me and it's not common to uh, the, the mass to 99.9% of the population and that's what we should be looking after uh, and that's what we should be sharing and uh, so I came today really just to get a little bit more information and a bit more in depth but one of the, be- one of the great things I mean as well is, uh, is just this kind of thing yeah. talking to each other Mm. Um, because you can pick a book up, uh, you can read that, yeah. but t- to actually interact convert, with people, interact with it, people, yeah. yeah, and that's and you've got you've got young people here, uh, and you've got right up to right oh, range, yes, fifty nine, yeah, <laughs> um, and man, so that's where you know that's 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 the real uh, uh, value of it. That's the value of it. And that's the most valuable thing, isn't it? It's yeah. a personal interaction. Mm. And I was just thinking, you said you're, you're a Christian, so obviously we've got common uh, common roots, really, going back to Adam, uh, Moses, Noah, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and all of those. And are these prophets are actually Jesus. mentioned in the Quran as well. Yes. Did you know? Yes. You probably knew yes. that anyway. Yeah, yeah. I've read So parts. we have the you know, common roots, really. So I think, right. would you say that uh, we maybe need more of these kinds of events to uh, change people's perceptions? Um, yeah, I mean, just what I was just saying yeah. earlier, Mohammed. You know, that this is here for what a day. It's only here for a, a day, day unfortunately. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, one of the one of the most powerful uh, uh, ways of uh, communicating, advertising, mm. is uh, word of mouth. Yeah. And having something like this here, you know, I leave. I'm going out tonight with friends. Yeah. We're going out for a meal, yeah. and I'll be, I'll, and I'll be telling people where I've been. Yeah. And so and, and if it was, could it just move up just like this? Yeah. yeah sure. And if it was here for a bit longer. Yeah. If it was here for a bit longer, they'd have the opportunity to come, wouldn't they? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Because I, so so being here for if it was here for a week. Mm. And you've got schools involved. Uh, I used to, um, I used to have, uh, I used to have uh, what we. Uh, it's, it's about twenty years ago now, and I went to uh, an event, history event, taught history in Newcastle, and there was a Holocaust survivor there talking about their experience of the Holocaust as a child, and it was a Holocaust uh, uh, education trust. And what I did, ultimately, was invite this person to the college to talk to the students. And subsequent years, what we did, because it's in the curriculum, yeah. we, uh, at the college, Lakes College, West Cumbria, mm-hmm. we invited uh, the schools of the area. Right. And we we sent invitations to the history teachers, geography teachers, and our religious RE teachers yeah. to come to the college to listen to a Holocaust uh, survivor, yeah. and then we ran um, workshops with the students from the schools yeah. on uh, bullying and harassment and we divide them into groups and we did work with, as teachers with our own students so the teachers came we were after four or five years we were getting through uh, into the into the college uh, on that day uh, between six and seven hundred students from from schools in this area for that event and I think that's a, is right though, you know, I think uh, what is um, Michael mentioned is that we should, one of the things that he mentioned is that, you know, we're only here for a day, maybe in future if we have a look at maybe having something like this over a period of a few days, maybe like, you know, like from Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something like that, weekend, so we've got more time, more people could access it and also involve the schools and colleges maybe. This is uh, Michael's suggestion, which I think is, you know, I think going forward we could 
we could probably do that. More advertising as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think because we've and it's, obviously and it's smart advertising. Yeah. And it's and the important thing is um, with schools, you know, it's, it's contacting the right person and then it, the right teacher by letter and then and then in such and, and then the the topic that you're inviting them to is on the curriculum because that teacher is then to go to their line manager head of department uh, uh, principal head teacher to get permission to take those children out of school and pay for a coach to take them to bring them so you need parking a coach we, we have big car park we get 10 12 coaches come in that for each school that's going to cost three three hundred pounds for depending how far the coach comes and you've got the teacher out with staff so as long as it's in the curriculum they've got an argument then or a justification with their line manager to be able to take those children out of school because it's a subject in the Sometimes curriculum. Sometimes they are going to mosque. Sometimes. They are visiting mosques. Yeah, they'll visit mosques. In Pakistan, I have seen so many yes. students coming to yeah. mosques. Yeah. We used to visit a mosque in Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. From Liverpool? Yeah, we used to visit a mosque in Liverpool. In Liverpool. We'd go down for two days. From in, here? Yeah. We'd go, so to, we'd go for two days to Liverpool because uh, we, we, we'd go to the... We go to the uh, the hospital. They were health and social care students, so we'd we'd, we'd visit do a number of things. We'd go to the cathedrals, the, the ho exactly, yeah. And then the mosque was part of of the program of the package. Have you been to today. William Mosque? Sorry, William Mosque. Can I? No, sorry, I haven't. Before no. we carry on, I mean, this could okay. get. A, I just sorry. wanted a few words, yeah. and I, yeah. and I'm just going to end it, and then you can carry on. Right. Thank you very much, Michael, That's for all right, the information Mohammed. that you've yeah. given us. Um, we'll certainly be, take the feedback back and you know, try and improve it and try and involve uh, schools and colleges. Don't know if we'll be back here this way, but I think the next uh, event that we're looking at probably could be Penrith and Carlisle. Mm. Um, so I'll certainly give that feedback. I but think the word of mouth is really important. Yeah. And if you're here for a few days, that word would, gets round yeah. and people come. So I appreciate your That's time. That's all right. Pleasure. Thank you very yeah, much, enjoyed Michael. It. Yeah, fascinating. All yeah. right. Thank you, Mohammed. Yeah. You may continue now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I got you on. Yeah. So I'm Stuart Donnett. I'm the project director of the White River Harbour Youth Project that uh, we're in here today. Okay. And uh, how did you find the exhibition and the event in general? It was very informative and I was amazed at the amount of things that you brought into uh, the area and the, the space that you've used um, and just the, yeah, the sheer amount of it, the sheer diversity of the things that you brought here today. And what was the main highlight for you in this exhibition and this event? What kind of... I think just, just for me to understand a bit more about Islam, it's not uh, something that I know a lot about and there's not that many people in this local area um, who, who are or who follow that faith probably. So it was just very good to have some more people coming to the area to, to explain what their, their faith is, what that means to them. Do you think holding such events in the future, maybe on a regular basis, will be beneficial for communities? I, oh yes, definitely. I think uh, it, it breaks down the sort of uh, the, some of the myths and some of the barriers and some of the preconceived ideas we all have about about different things. And by explaining it and allowing people to, to see and c communicate together, it definitely helps break down those barriers. Have you ever attended any other event of this like before? Um, not, not in the same, not really, no. S similar, I suppose, um, to, to learn more about something, but maybe not, not, not the same as this, no. Well, thank you, Stuart. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank Thanks you for, for taking time out answering questions.